Hello, everybody. BTO Pro here, and today... No, it doesn't work that way. Hey, everybody. BTO Pro here. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you in detail... I know, painstaking. Uh, about copy and paste operations in hacks, specifically. So, I wrote this article recently on Dev.2. It um, goes in way into the weeds about the way that we're doing, um, basically, Microsoft uh, Word-style cleanup for things. So, this post is going to be more so about actually leveraging that and looking at how one implements copy and paste, some considerations that we're working through, and ways that hacks can help maintain user experience expectations based on you know, simple heuristics. So um, this is going to get really in the weeds. Um, so what we're talking about is um, being able to hit edit content you know, take this, copy, paste, and that not be a big deal. Seems easy enough, right? But there are some additional considerations involved with simple operations such as copy and paste. Um, for example, at the moment, we're running into one of them. So if you look in here, we see we have a whole ton of paragraphs contained within another paragraph. Even something as simple as this is going to screw up hacks and other editors or if I update source, you'll see now, because we can't really have a paragraph in a paragraph, or at least some of our scrubbers help improve the experience to make sure there's no paragraphs in paragraphs, um, so that we get this type of output. All right, so working towards some form of DOM perfection, if you will, so that if I take this and copy, highlight this text, copy, and paste, I should get identical right? An identical experience. And you see there is a BR in there. So that's something we need to work on cleaning up. Now I know, I'm pretty sure I know where that BR just came from. But so we'll step back through, look at how the code generates this. So in fact, I know exactly where that BR came from. It's because I tried to take out output equals output dot trim. <laughs> um, anyway, so how we handle paste, copy and paste operations in hacks or in any JavaScript application for that matter, is you end up having um, a keyboard operation. In this case, I'm doing an event listener on paste. And so we can see that there is actually something called paste. It's a window level event. So we're doing add event listener paste run on paste. So when on paste fires, and again, I'm going to kind of try to step through what's going on here. Um, as far as hacks and attempting to hijack a normal paste operation, the decision tree involved in saying, mm, you know what, let's just put that in a page versus hacks taking over and doing a lot of cleanup of that material. So first of all, we want to make sure that what we are working with is actually a text element in the first place. Um, if it's not a textual element, like let's say that we took, um, uh, let's say we took this self check Okay, so self-check, let's, um, if I'm able, okay, so we'll save. And then if I highlighted the self-check, which I can't do because it's not content editable, but imagine that I highlighted the self-check and I hit copy. Um, when I would paste, it's not a textual element. It should just copy that item in question. So let's say that you copied an image from somewhere. Um, that, that wouldn't pop up in the same way. This is purely text based as far as a copy. So hacks is asked, is the thing active text? So text elements are all kinds of things. Um, we can see the things that we are currently saying, this is what to consider a text element, right? We take the node, we say, hey, go lowercase with the tag name just for consistency, and then see if we still have a tag name and if it's in our valid list of tags. If it's a valid tag we care about, we only call things text if they're one of these. So um, this is, you know, underline, bold, you know, your common HTML primitive text operations. So again, if this, if the thing that was copied is something like code editor, this code isn't even going to apply. So the way that we're interfacing with the paste event is if you return false or if this does nothing, 
then it's going to defer to what the global window state typical browser paste would be. If you intercept it in some way and you cancel the event, you prevent it from propagating up to the browser window level, and then you're in charge of what to do with that paste. So real early on, we can dictate whether or not Hacks even cares about this element. So let's say it is a text operation that's very common, right? So it is a text operation, okay. What we're gonna do is we have to get the pasted content in a platform or a cross browser way. So the first thing we do is we look and see if we have clipboard data. Now this should pretty much always be there, but just to be safe, we double check or that we have the original event clipboard data. Um, then we're gonna get that data, assuming that we can get that data, as text slash HTML. So this is why in the browser, when you go and you hover over this and hit copy, and then you hit paste, you actually end up getting the HTML itself. It's not just the textual representation because you highlighted something in rich text, the, the copy and paste history knows this is rich text and here's the real thing versus just the textual representation. In JavaScript, you can do get data and say, give me that data as HTML. Now. If we need to, we can fall back on window clipboard for some older browser support and say, all right, just get it as text. Now that's gonna strip the HTML uh, nature of it, but it'll still fly at that point. So then what I do is I'm gonna store original content versus the pasted content. This will come in handy later. Um, then I need to see, are we doing an inline paste? Something that we'll use later. And then we're gonna start working against the pasted content. So I hate spans. They're the bane of my existence. But yet, a lot of times when you do DOM operations, particularly if you're copying and pasting from uh, platforms like Medium or Google Docs, you're gonna get a ton of them. So I go through, we kill all empty spans. Now, um, and this is you know with the S selector, this is any number of just spaces, space-driven characters. I also get rid of divs, and I replace all divs with paragraphs. Um, the reason I do this is we like to have highly semantic markup in what the output is of hacks. Now, this you also notice from the previous article, there is this strip Microsoft Word um, function. I don't include the div stripping in that because I don't, you know, I'm not going to assume you want to get rid of divs if you were to reuse this, this library. The div um, hatred is mostly a thing with me and hacks. So again, the div, if, if we're working in just the content area, which is what Hacks cares about, and this is highly semantic, there are ways of laying that material out with other web components. We don't wanna get in the weeds of divs. Now, if divs exist in the, in the DOM structure, yeah, Hacks will allow them to exist. But if I copy and paste them in, the likelihood that I want there to be a whole ton of div structure is pretty low. Uh, again, this is an assumption that we're making for the way that we're handling this. So. Um, let's do a console log on original content and paste content so we can see what the difference ends up being here. So I'm going to refresh, okay, edit, and then I'll just paste in the word original content. And so we can see here pretty quick, get me off screen, we don't care about me. Um, we can see pretty quickly here, right, even though I just highlight, or actually that came from, um, that came from the uh, other window, right? That came from VS Code with this original content. It came across with more than just original content, right? So I'm using Ubuntu um, in the case, at least, of Ubuntu working with v VS Code doing the copy operation. I got a meta tag and I got a div and a span all to just give me the word original content. And so we can see here that based on just this little amount of cleanup, that's involved here, right? We see what's in the DOM and it just says original content, right? And it doesn't look indistinguishable from this other thing that existed previously. Um, so what's happening, right, is our function runs and it cleans off this meta tag, it gets rid of the div, replacing it with a paragraph, and then it ends up with just this empty paragraph that's not something it can really work with. That gets sanitized out in the next level um, uh, that we work through. So you can see here, we do have original content. Now that's what you would expect. You would expect to just paste in the word original content. You wouldn't anticipate copying from, 
you know, Microsoft Word or whatever, if the background text happened to be blue, you wouldn't really expect that to translate over here when you just copied the text. However, that's the default way these things tend to work. So next, right, because we're, we're getting rid of a lot of that variation between things um, initially. The next thing that we do is we take whatever the pasted content is and we convert it to these things called hacks elements. So each hacks elements and the way that, and this is a common trick I use for um, skimming off a data blob and converting it back to a list of children. So I say, okay, um, create a div and then set the inner HTML to whatever I give you. Then let's just look at the child nodes, right? So immediately that's gonna give us those two nodes in a, a nice, nicer to access array format. From there, I skip, th I walk through those nodes and say, well, make sure we have a tag name, right? So that helps in case some HTML comments slip through somehow, uh, things that are white space that technically are nodes in the DOM but are not actually real tags. Uh, and then verify that this is a valid tag. Then if it is, we're gonna return that and we use this thing called node to hacks element, which node to hacks element just basically converts it into a, a little data object. So to see what happens when we actually call that, um, let's do this HTML to hacks elements. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna console log that. All right, so the first step in our operation, even for this simple paste, right? Um, so I'll paste, paste that now, right? The hacks elements piece. We see our initial cleanup. And then we see that this, and this is what a hacks element looks like. Um, we see that we've been able to generate two separate unique um, items from this. The first one is an empty paragraph tag, right? And that's come out of resolving some cleanup uh, residuals in this weird data block here. The second one, is the p tag that actually says hacks elements so it takes those dom nodes um, shifts them into this simplified format part of the reason for doing this is um, sanitization and data security so by constantly taking blobs of html passing them through this thing that converts them to object form sanitizes them i can then convert them back to html blobs and know that i've ripped out certain properties um, all without doing complex regexes. The previous blog post, right up, and if you skim through the way this utils function works, the initial pass is all with advanced regexes. So now we have to get into some, some weird logic here. So if we didn't just get anything, that would imply that we just literally copied the exact, you know, maybe if I copied the word monospace from here and pasted it. So if I paste monospace, you'll see there's nothing here. And so if it doesn't find any elements, right, that means it was just a textual paste. It's not an object or a rich HTML paste, but just pure text, like literally this word, no weird wrapper stuff attempting to insinuate it something different. Then it won't come up as any elements because it there's no HTML. If there's no HTML, then we can go, oh, well, Pasting it inline is true. Let's do one last check and let's see if the original is different from the pasted content. Because if it is, that means we had some weird thing. Maybe someone actually tried to copy and paste the word uh, script. So like the tag itself with the escaped edges. Well, passing that through our filter, it's extra paranoid. It's going to rip out the word script. So then we'd know it's not the same, in which case it would say, well, defer to whatever was pasted. However, if it is the same as our little example shows, because it couldn't resolve an object, then we just return false. If we return false from this function, basically all of this process is ignored and the browser's typical copy and paste operation will happen. So that's probably your more, your more typical use case of copy and paste just occurring, right? Um, now let's go to some of the other use cases and break down, right? So maybe we just get one element. And if that element is a paragraph, then let's just say, hey, let's make it the new thing that we're pasting in and say that it's going to be inline, which we'll get to in a little bit. But we can do some other cool things at this point, right? Because if we passed the initial checks, we know we have something that is an actual DOM node. It's, it's valid HTML and that it's, um, 
uh, that we are not going to do a typical browser paste, right? We're still in control of what happens with this. So one of those things, and just added this recently as I was doing some cleanup in this area, is to um, skip on links and their inclusion in things. So um, if I was to, for example, post a, a link to something, so if I was to just, I went in another window and let's say I pasted this, which goes to a test lecture. So if I said, oh, you know what? I really want to embed that. And I copied the URL and came over here and hit paste. It wouldn't do the thing that I was planning on demonstrating. That, that would be phenomenal if it just didn't do that. <laughs> it would paste it, paste it in, in context here. Um, I think I have some of my sanitization stuff a little too, a little too strong. It's interesting. It's supposed to actually be the HTML representation of a link tag. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be more, more like that is what you would tend to expect to see here. Or it could be that I didn't put in a valid link. Maybe let's try that again. So I did a full on copy. Nope. It's not a valid link. <laughs> Let's try, uh, maybe put it in VS code and then I'll copy it out of there. Some of this is, you know, trying to get the filters to not conflict with each other. Um, all right. That pulled in two tags and one is that link. Interesting. Um, let's go to that dev.2 post and let's try this, try it this way. Edit. Whoop. Come on, their profile. Um, we're going to edit this post and we're going to take some text and we're going to say uh, stuff. All right, so we would make a make an example link. I'm just trying to get this to demonstrate what it is that I was planning to, to showcase with this. Hey, there we go. Um, so we're going to have to figure out what in the filters generate that other thing to occur. But um, what we can see when I paste this in, now I took a, a rich text link, right? And I copy and pasted it. And what I end up getting is just a single tag. In this case, it's a link tag with content of stuff. So this is, you can see part of how we're able to take this, make decisions and do some sanitizing, uh, which is cool. But what I did then is I said, okay, so I have that link to, to content. I, it's not a paragraph. I do have one hacks element. Um, and it's a, it's a link and that link has an href, right? We can see it right there. If that's the case, let's try and see if we know how to actually do a rich import of this. So what we ended up doing here is you see, okay, let's build a little object. We say source is the href and title is content, right? The text that we pasted down. In fact, you should be able to see that now it doesn't have the text based down. I thought it might, uh, have the word stuff somewhere in here. Um, I guess I, I'm not mapping that. Um, so what we do from here with those values is we run this function, um, that we have called insert logic from values. <laughs> yeah. Great name. I know. Um, what it's able to do is it's able to pop up a dialogue and say, Hey, you pasted something that I think I know how to handle. How do you want to visualize that? Do you want to visualize it as a YouTube video, a QR code. And then what you're seeing happen is instead of this showing, instead of this popping up and asking you how you want to display it, it's just displaying it because there's only one valid option with the way that we have this set up. Um, another example would be like Wikipedia. So if we go to a Wikipedia article, let's say on the allegory of the cave, um, let's see if we can't paste it in, right? We have that issue from before, but let's take, um, take some text, paste it in, double click, apply link, and we'll turn it into allegory of the cave. I'll hit save, which is, you know, fake. Then we're going to copy this, paste it in the page and note that it pasted into the page, but it actually generated something else. It said, again, we're, we're having this little logic layer intercept what's happening and saying, oh, well, it looks like you got a Wikipedia article. I can probably do something with that. And then attempts to uh, render and present the Wikipedia article. 
Um, now we do have another way, you know, even internal to this to handle this. I could say Wikipedia article and drop it on the page, and then I could actually tell it, well, it's the allegory of the cave, and we get it the way that we want. So there could be, there's definitely some room for improvement in this specific area, right? Instead of a silly iframe link to the material, it could be nicer to just say, like, oh, well, we actually know how to render Wikipedia articles. So the important thing with this, though, is if we end up getting a match, right, we get something that says, hey, I know how to handle that rich, that rich text link uh, embed, we cancel the original event. So we prevent the default behavior of the browser, then we stop this event from propagating. And I honestly, I don't know when I need to do both of these. Um, but you can do stop immediate propagation, and it won't allow this event to go past where it currently is. Um, so that would be, let's say there's multiple paste handlers running in the DOM, the, the highest level one, or sorry, least priority, being the default behavior of your keyboard doing the paste and the browser saying, this is the way that we handle pastes in content editable areas. So this is going to stop that from happening. And then we return false. So we're saying, yeah, this is going to handle what we wanted it to do. And now we want to just, we don't want the browser to execute its paste. Um, and we're done with this whole loop um, to see what happens if I take this out. Right. So let's take out that prevent default. And so if we take out the prevent default, this is just my little copy queue thing that I have here. So let's uh, collapse that way. I don't care about that menu. Right. We're going to go in here. I'm going to pull up my little copy history and we're going to do the allegory of the cave or. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So do the allegory of the cave again, and it went through just fine. Let's do, all right. So those are going through just fine, even with returning false in this case. Let's see what happens if we get rid of the returning false part too. So we're gonna go that paste. It appears to just put it in the right way instead of all of the pre-planning that I did to illustrate that it would still could do the original pace. So <laughs> you can see that once we get to this point in the operation, I guess I'm already preventing default from happening. Um, yeah, you can actually see it down lower in the structure. Anyway, um, so we've got the link. We're going to do that rich uh, import from logic. Another thing we try and count for is uh, whether or not something's a grid plate that you're copying and pasting. That's a little more nuanced. Um, but it is possible to have something that is declared as a grid item. Um, so that's how we end up with these column type of layouts to things, right? It's our grid system. Um, so we do have some logic around copying and pasting of these so that if we were to paste stuff in here, it still shows up in the same place. Um, the last one is, let's say we had a complex thing that we did a copy and paste on, and it passed all of our filters, like it's cleaned up, we're good, but it's more than one element, right? So it's more than just this little example where I'm doing a, a basic copy and paste. So let's do, like, let's say that we highlighted these three things that we copied. And then we pasted that what we see we get is a UL and a paragraph tag. So we did our cleanup, we've got our UL and our paragraph tag or we can just copy these two in question, right? And paste them in. And each time we should be getting list items, or in this case, a UL. Let's see if we can get multiple things at the same level. Nope, those are still nested in a UL. All right, so let's, uh, let's take these two items. We'll copy and we'll paste those. Okay, so we've got two items that is discovered. If it discovers multiple items, then we step through them we do this cleanup on each individual one, and we actually do a deeper uh, uh, identification of those spans. The reason we do that is because there is the possibility of those, those ordered lists and things, having a lot of those start to show up when you do copy and paste operations. It's a little silly. Um, but then we convert all of those to a singular content blob. We prevent the default from happening, as is previously been shown was happening with these, right? That's why this occurred. So if you get to this point in the operation, we prevent the default. Um, 
And then what we're going to do is attempt to figure out where to put this, <laughs> which is another sticky problem. So um, you need to be able to get, there's um, two, two objects or classes, whatever you want to call it, in, um, in JavaScript that you have access to. Um, and these are a little weird, to be perfectly honest. So you have a range and you have a selection. And they're sort of elements. They're more like this pseudo thing that helps you bridge between elements. So a range is any like spacing effectively. Um, and a selection is this. It's this highlighted area. Right, so if I copy this and then I highlight the word love and hit paste, see how it gets rid of the word love and puts this back here, right? Sir, because I can't spell it's because. Um, we can see that this went through our logic and discovered, hey, this is what you should put there, and it replaces it. So what you can do with that is that's a selection. A range is actually more detailed. It's like, oh, this selection spans these three elements. Here's what the next element is in the selection. Here's the primary target of this selection. And so you can take a range and you can run a function called delete contents. So that says, oh, the selected area is an actual node. It's probably a text node. Delete the contents of that. Then go through all of the things we're putting in new, again, using this trick of, hey, I've got a bunch of new nodes where all this content set it as the um, as this fake div tags children so that we can loop through them. Um, then it's going to step through, find all the paragraphs that are empty and remove them, which is how we didn't get empty paragraphs in one of the above examples. Um, it's going to see, oh, is this an inline paste? Because if it's an inline paste, we're going to do uh, create a text node and set the inner content to that text node. Then in a range, which is again, that it's that selected area, we're saying, hey, it's these letters. You can take that range and say, okay, well, I just made a new text node. Um, so I cleared out your material, but I still have the range in question in the DOM, even if it's just where the cursor is. Then insert this text node there, which gets it to uh, reposition itself. Then there's another function I have here called position cursor in node. Um, and position cursor in node is a minor abstraction that says um, position the context menu on whatever we're currently working on just for consistency's sake. Create a range because you can generate your own. It doesn't have to actually be what the user has selected. This is the way that you could force selection of text in certain scenarios. Um, then set the start of that range, like where the cursor starts to this position and then collapse it which implies that you just have the singular line as opposed to even like a white space selected. The reason I put myself on camera is so you can see me doing the white space selected. I know it was a really helpful visual. Um, then we remove all ranges and we add our range in so that that way if anything else was selected, we get rid of that. Then we uh, target and do our specific selection. You can see how incredibly mundane and painful this stuff has been to put in place. Then we, so what we're doing is we're inserting even that little text snippet into the page, removing the previous text, and then we're positioning the cursor in the right place. So the context for this very specific type of a thing would be if I was in here and I highlighted this, and I hit copy, and then I pasted right there, we could correctly target and put that in position. Note that it just pasted it literally there and got rid of that other section, even though what I pasted or copied from was a pretty complex object. Now, it doesn't seem like it was a complex object, but as we showed before, right, even if I just copy insert node put it right there, um, it's doing uh, a pretty complicated insert of a pair. I have to actually do an additional check on that, unfortunately, because it's coming up as two items. So... Lastly, in this, um, if we got all the way here, which means we just copy and paste a bunch of items, then we're going to loop through and we're going to insert them into the into the DOM. Um, this is a little weird, and this is a common operation. There's an insert before <laughs> function, but there isn't a insert after function. 
um, the assumption in JavaScript with working with objects in this way and inserting them in the DOM is that you'll just do an append child. And append child will throw it um, as the, at the, the last thing in whatever that element is. So what we end up doing is, and you can see the way you can step through this, what a range looks like. So we say, okay, loop through an array. Uh, if we have a common ancestor container, which in a range, right, a range is just that little highlighting a singular thing. It's saying, hey, if we're all, if we just start doing, you know, if the element above us that contains us is the same element, because you could do a range across a whole bunch of stuff, right? So if it's just like the word parent, well, then this thing above it would be the node in question. If we have one of those, and, the, um, and then we have the parent node of that, because the thing that you've selected is just text. So if we have the parent node of that text, that's going to position us. When we do a highlight, it's going to say, oh, the parent node is this whole item. Because the textual node is just this area right here. I mean, this is very weird, I know. Um, then we're going to go to the thing after where we currently are, which in this case means, okay, so we're at the bottom. But if we were in this one, the thing after our current parent element is actually this element. Then we can say insert before that one. Uh, a goofy way you can achieve this is saying whatever the thing that we're inserting before, yeah, just go to its parent node and then do the insert before, which seems needlessly verbose. But this is going to put our active thing we're working on right before you know, this one. So we say, hey, this is where we want to insert it. We go down to this and then we say insert before this. It's really stupid, but that's the way you do it. Um, and then we have some additional cleanup logic internal to the hacks that just says like, hey, if something weird happened and that's not actually there, just like append it to the right place. So this is a long rambly way of saying, wow, is it difficult to decipher and put these things together? It took me quite a while to figure out what the difference between the range and selection and how to accurately put this in place. So hopefully this is of use to someone. If you want to learn more about uh, any of our projects, you can go to hacktheweb.org or uh, I'm going to be posting this um, a follow up to the let's talk about copy and paste article um, shortly after this is done recording. Catch you later.